Welcome back. Since Treasury Secretary Mnuchin said he was pulling the plug on the Fed's lending facilities, including one servicing uni debt, the municipal market has actually drifted higher. His decision will allow Congress to reappropriate $455 billion in CARES Act funding, which some say was sparsely accessed in the first place. But my next guest says these programs should be extended to next year because the worst is still to come. With me now is Tom Koslick. He's head of Muni Strategy and Credit at Hilltop Securities. And Tom, it's all interconnected to some extent, right? I mean, it's interesting that you could say Secretary Mnuchin's decision, while obviously not predicated on the fact that there will be a Biden administration, if there is a stimulus package that includes more state and local aid, it would seem to justify his kind of move, right? Yeah, I think that there's a, uh, if, if, if there is a situation where there's a significant amount of not only COVID relief generally for the economy, but specific targeted you know, and or a significant amount that can go to state and local governments, I think that that would be one thing. But we've seen going back to August that, you know, things are really, really moving slowly, if at all, on the COVID relief side. And, you know, it, it seems that aid for state and local governments has been one of the top, one of the topics or one of the themes that's really slowed things up. Right, for sure. And the reason why it's uh, divisive is because, you know, people don't want it to turn into a bailout when that money could be better spent on really suffering industries. And frankly, the municipal market, as you and your colleagues keep telling us, we've been doing a lot of coverage on it. The muni market has right. held up pretty well. I mean, who's even using this Fed facility? I thought it was basically just New Jersey or something, right? Well, and, you know, the, the, the fact that the municipal liquidity facility has only been tapped by two issuers really shouldn't be a uh, that shouldn't be it, you shouldn't look at municipal credit and think that just because it was tapped by two two issuers that uh, the worst isn't yet to come i think that the worst is yet to come with regard to downgrades outpacing upgrades i think that's going to end up happening for years and the municipal liquidity facility was put together so it was really only supposed to be used as a last resort in a last resort in a situation like if we saw something like what we saw back in March and April where issuers were not able to tap the market because back then uh, the municipal bond market essentially froze and I and the Fed put that program together as a last resort to make it so uh, not only issuers could access liquidity but also so the market knew that issuers had an opportunity to, to access liquidity if the market did freeze again. Right. And I think the problem is we know that the Fed can do that again. You know, if we spin forward six months, depending on what happens with the next relief package, if we start getting headlines about layoffs and defaults and major cities needing to file for bankruptcy and that kind of thing, I mean, don't we all expect that the Fed or somebody will step up and say, hey, look, we're here to backstop this market to make sure that it doesn't create a broader credit uh, crunch. But, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Congress can act, too. So it sort of feels like why act now with money that the restaurants, the hotels, you know, all these different industries. We had a segment earlier this hour about whether a second mm -hmm. stimulus check should be coming. Why keep those funds appropriated for the muni market? Yeah, first of all, those layoffs in the state and local government sector are already happening. Uh, over the last two months, we saw uh, about 300,000 uh, layoffs in the state and local government sector. I expect that without targeted, uh, you know, significant aid for state and local governments, that that's going to continue. And I expect that when we can, when we see revenue levels of revenue at the state and local government continue to drop, because I understand, you know, there's all kinds of uh, there's all kinds of enthusiasm about the fact that vaccines are going to be uh, ready in a matter of months, uh, but you know the the point at which those vaccines are ready to be distributed, number one, and then number two, the fact that you know state and local government revenues and revenues for uh, airports and transportation issuers, those aren't, that's not going to come back immediately. Those revenue streams are going to take months, if not in some cases, years to come back. Yeah. So how many major cities or major public works do you think are in danger of not being able to pay their bills in the next year or so? So I, I, you know, getting back to the municipal liquidity facility, I think that, that that's one topic. The, the topic about the municipal liquidity facility is a situation where the Fed put that program together so issuers would have an opportunity to access uh, liquidity without the market. Uh, that hasn't happened. You know, we haven't we we haven't been concerned about that going back to April because we're actually going to have a rec we're likely to have a record year of bond issuance this year. We're probably going to have 450 billion, if not more, of bond issuance this year. The situation that we're that 
we're most concerned about is a situation that isn't just you know in a couple of weeks or in a couple of months, but you know we're still at the beginning of this third wave, and I think that there's still a lot of uncertainty that investors and analysts need to think about. You know, I think it's fine to have a optimistic case, but I think it's also important to have a uh, a base case and also a situation where you know there's a, a case where again revenues don't come back quite as quickly as what folks are hoping they come back at. Yeah, no, I mean, you certainly look at the budgets of some of these, again, I use cities as, as the big example, some mm -hmm. of the coastal cities, and it looks really, really dire. I don't know what the answer is, Tom, but I appreciate you coming to kind of uh, shed some light on it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank Tom you. Tom Koslick is with Hilltop Securities. Still ahead, there are two new players buying up a bulk of new Bitcoin supply that's coming onto the market. We'll tell you who they are and how it'll make investing in Bitcoin a whole lot easier. That's right after the short break. Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Ask your investment advisor about BAM insured Muni bonds. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable rating. BAM. Build America Mutual. 